module 12.3 and subqueries because uh, I just, uh, for some reason, subqueries really uh, kind of click with me. I like using them a lot. And uh, again, it's uh, just uh, going to be an example of uh, a different approach to bringing data together that, uh, you know, may or may not, um, may or may not be easier for you to use. So we'll, uh, we'll talk about correlated and uncorrelated subqueries. Uh, uncorrelated subqueries are what uh, I find kind of the most helpful and what we use the most. Uh, and those are executed once and the return, the results are returned to some outer query. Uh, and then we, we take some action based on that set of values or a correlated subquery, which is executed once for every tuple in the outer query. But the way subqueries work is that we have basically two, two or more complete SQL queries and they're nested one inside the other. And then when they execute, the innermost query executes and then returns some value that the outer query uh, uses. And that just continues until we've uh, executed all of the queries in this uh, kind of nesting of subqueries. So we're gonna start by talking about uncorrelated subqueries where the inner query executes first and then passes one or more values to the outer query. And uh, typically we use uh, one of these operators in, any, or all. And then we can negate these with our not operator. So the in operator evaluates if rows processed by the outer query are equal to the, any of the values that are returned by the subquery, by that inner query. So looking back at our course and, uh, oh, this is actually a new relation we haven't seen yet. S excuse me, section. And actually in our database, I uh, already had a relation called section for something else, or perhaps one of the other database professors did. At any rate, there was kind of a naming conflict there. So I had to create this as a table called uh, sec, S-E-C. I just shortened section. Why do I keep doing? Actually, I'll tell you why I keep doing this is because in the non-relational database course, the database we are currently talking about, once you're connected to it, you're always querying the same thing you're connected to. So you don't have to specify what you're trying to query. So from kind of goes away in that particular database and my fingers just are typing that stuff instead of this stuff. Anyway, so we're going to say select asterisk from SEC for our section. And this data that's returned here is just the same as what we have uh, in our PowerPoint slide here. So the section relation, and then we have our course relation, which we uh, just called C. Okay, so the actual SQL I'm writing here is a little bit different than what is on the, uh, on the slide, just because our tables in Oracle are named a little bit differently. So what we have is we want to select asterisk from C where course number Okay, so that's this attribute in C right here. In, and then here comes our subquery, select course number from uh, section, which I just have SEC, okay? So we have one complete SQL query here inside another SQL query, okay? So this is our subquery, and what's going to happen is this is going to execute first. And I'm gonna highlight this and execute th just this part. This query is going to execute and return this set of values, okay? So when the inner query executes, it returns this set of values. And then from the outer query, it's going to select from this table where the value of course number is in this set of values that was just returned. So when this inner query executes, it's basically taking all of these values and essentially just putting them in this, uh, in this set of parentheses. So it's very much like we had just done something like this, right? Where the value of course number is in this set of values kind of a, uh, it's kind of a neat thing. So let me put this back here. Select uh, course number from. 
And when we do this, it's evaluating each one of these tuples in relation C to say, is the value of this course number attribute in this set of values that was returned from the inner query? Okay, so when we look at this, I'll take myself out of here for a second. So this set of values was returned, 22QA375, 22IS270, 22IS330, 22IS832, and so forth. And then it's only going to return values from the course relation or relation C in our database, where this value is in this set of values. Okay, so these are all the courses that are offered, and this is maybe all the sections that are being offered in a particular semester. And then we only want to return the courses that are being that have a section currently being offered. So 15 econ 112 is not in this list. So that evaluated to false. 22 QA 375. Well, look, there's one, two, three, four instances of that value occurring in this set of values that was returned by this subquery. So that one evaluates to true and that tuple would be returned. Okay, uh, 18 Econ 123, there's not. 22 QA 411, there's not. But 22 IS 270 is in this set of values. Okay, so this is going to be returned. Uh, 22 IS 330 is in this set of values. 22 IS 832 is in this set of values. And uh, this 20 ECE S 212 is in this set of values, okay? So we returned the value of course number for every tuple in this section relationship. And then we selected from the course relation all the tuples where the value of course number is in this set of values that was returned. And we get a relation that looks something like this. So if we evaluate or execute this SQL, this is what we get. And this is telling us all of the, uh, all of the rows from this course relation where the value of course number is in this set of values in the section relation. Okay, so this is uh, using an in operation, but this is really illustrating a relationship between course and section, right? Because all of our values of course number in this section relation are in the set of values in this course relation, right? So we have a parent-child relationship here where course is the parent and section is the child, right? Because there is one instance of this course, 22QA375, but then there are many sections of 22QA375 being offered at different times throughout the day or different times throughout the week. Right? So we have a one-to-many relationship between course and section where there are many instances of a section for one single course, okay? So in this case, course is a foreign key that refer, or course number is a foreign key in the section relation that refers to this candidate key. And I believe in this case, probably the primary key in this course relation. So this is a fairly lightweight way to be able to find all of the courses that currently have a section because we could indeed do an inner join. I, I think some of you are probably thinking about that. We could say select asterisk from C, inner join SEC on C dot course number equals SEC dot course number, okay? And what this is going to do is do this core, this evaluation of equality for every pair of tuples, you can't see my Oracle screen, every pair of tuples between these two relations, and then it's gonna pull back a lot of extra data that we're not necessarily interested in. It's pulling back all this stuff from the section relation, so a little bit less efficient if all we really wanted was the data from the course relation, right? And you can see here, we actually have some duplication of data because if we have a course that's being offered multiple times, 
we're repeating the course name and the course number and the course credit for each section, right? Because this is, you know, one of the sections, here's another section, here's another section, here's another section of this same course. So we're getting back actually more data than we may really want here when we do this join. But this is effectively the same thing, you know, that's happening here where we're, uh, where we're trying to find all of our courses that are in this set of courses that are currently being offered, okay? So we run this subquery, it comes back with a set of values, and then we're getting from the course relation all of our courses that have a value of course number that is in this set of values that was returned. And then if we wanted to see, for example, all of our courses that currently do not have a section being offered, right? If we wanted to see intro to economics, uh, this other intro to economics, supply chain, optimization, financial accounting, all of this stuff, we could just negate this by saying not in this set of values. And when we do that, we get, yeah, the kind of the opposite. So these are all of our courses that currently do not have a section. So in and not in, very, uh, very useful stuff. <clears throat> now with these subqueries, uh, in is what I find myself using most often, but uh, we can also use uh, these operators of all and any. Okay, and we use these with our comparison operators like greater than, less than, or equal to. Okay, so we could say uh, we want to return tuples from some relation where the value of an attribute is greater than all of the values that are returned by the subquery, or less than all of the values, or less than any of the values, or greater than any of the values, or equal to any of the values. And uh, unfortunately, I don't have this data set in the Oracle server right now. Like I said, there was some mix up with the data or somehow my data disappeared from me from uh, the last time I used this. But in this case, if we wanted to find the name and salary of professor where their salary is greater than all of the salaries where the department code is three, What's going to happen, so we have this subquery here that's going to execute first, selecting the salary from this professor relation for department three, okay? So it's going to return just this set of values here, 77,000, 77,000, 76,000, 67,000, and 43,000, okay? So this is the set of values that's going to be returned by this. And then in the outer query, we want to select the name, <clears throat> and salary from the professor relation where the value of salary is greater than all of these values of salary. So it has to be greater than 77,000, it has to be greater than 76,000, greater than 67,000, and greater than 43,000. And that's going to return just these three tuples here uh, where we have a salary of 92,000, 99,000, and 99,000 for these three individuals. Okay, now keep in mind, if we're saying we want to find salaries that are greater than all of these salaries, really we only need to find salaries that are greater than the highest salary, right? So we could say uh, in this subquery, instead of select salary, we could say select max salary, and that would just return one single value, okay? So kind of two different approaches for, uh, for getting there. Typically, uh, though, you will find in your subqueries, you are only going to be returning the value of a single attribute, okay? So typically, you're only going to be projecting one single attribute in this subquery uh, in order for these comparisons to make sense. Okay, we could also say greater than or equal to all of these salaries, and that's going to give us... Uh, also, these two people that are making 77,000 that happen to be in department three. So uh, that gives us our, our max from that department. Oh, and here's the, uh, the example I was just talking about where if we said select max salary, that's going to return just this one single value 
a 77,000. So we're gonna get the exact same result. And um, depending on the state of the data, this could be more or less efficient than, uh, than doing it the other way. Okay, if we say greater than any of these values, so we're saying it's greater than, this is kind of like an or, it needs to be greater than 77,000 or 76,000 or 67,000 or 43,000, just greater than any of them, right? And this is going to be a lot more. This is basically saying greater than the minimum of this set that came from the, uh, from the subquery, right? And one thing to point out here, this is a good question, will it return null values? And the answer is no. If we have, a, uh, we have an employee here, or two employees here actually, that for some reason have a null value for salary, okay? Null, surprisingly enough, is not less than 43,000. It's also not greater than 43,000 because null is just the absence of any data at all. And that's a weird thing. Like if we don't specify the salary for someone, you would think it would be less than anything. Uh, but that's not the way null works and that's not the way databases work. So just an example of why we want to avoid uh, null values whenever we can because they do kind of weird things like this. And uh, yeah, of course we can write this using an aggregate function. Uh, we could select the minimum salary from professor where decode equals three and, uh, and get the same result. Yeah, right there. Now another uh, type of subquery we can do. So we've previously been using the subquery as part of our where clause, right? And all of these, uh, all of these examples so far, our subquery has been part of the where, okay? But we can also use a subquery uh, to create what we call an inline view, right? Or a subquery that's evaluated that essentially creates a new relation uh, that we can select from, okay? So we could do something like, like this. So we're gonna select these attributes from the professor table and then join that to a relation that is created by selecting uh, some other attributes from the table. And in this case, we're uh, actually uh, running an aggregate function to find the average salary per department. Okay. So in this inner query, it's generating this relation here. We're selecting the department code and ignore this rounding stuff for a moment, selecting the department code and the average salary and giving that an alias of department average from this professor relation grouped by a common value of decode. Okay. So for like these three tuples here that have a value of one for decode, 45,000 plus 92,000 plus 66,000 divided by three is 66, 67,666. Uh, and I think maybe repeating sixes after that. Our average salary for department six is 44,000. And note that this null value here does not get counted in that average. The average salary for department three is 68,000 and so forth. So what's happening here is this subquery is running creating this relation, and then we're joining this relation to the professor relation on this criteria, A, so professor A equals B, or A.decode equals B.decode, okay? So the professor table is being joined to this relation, which we gave an alias of B, where the salary of the professor is greater than or equal to the average salary of the department, okay? And one thing to point out here, because some of you might be thinking, well, we're using the output of an aggregate function here, so shouldn't we be using having instead of where? Well, the aggregate function is actually happening in this subquery, and it's, it's returning a relation that just has these values. So in this case, these are actually just values that we're able to compare against here. Excuse me. 
So we would wind up getting a relation that looks like this. So the inner query runs creates this relation, which is joined to this other relation on this criteria. And then we're returning only the tuples where the professor salary is greater than the department average. So I'll try to get this uh, data loaded into the uh, Oracle server so you can run this query yourself and kind of play around with uh, some of the criteria here and, and maybe get a better feel for what's going on. We can also select, let's see, we are, Yeah, we can also put our subqueries directly in our select clause. So instead of just uh, joining, in this case, we are selecting, or our subquery is returning a single value that is being, uh, that is being attributes projected from in the outer query, okay? So in this case, this is a kind of a weird situation where this inner query is being executed one time for every tuple in the outer query. And we call this a correlated subquery. And we'll bring this up in, uh, in just a couple of slides. But this inner query is executed once every time, or once for every tuple, excuse me, in this outer query. So we're getting the name, the department code, and the salary of our professor. And we're calling this A. Okay, so it's A.name, A.D code, A.salary. And the average salary from this professor relation where the department code of the professor being referenced in the outer salary or outer table, outer query, is equal to the department code from this inner query where we're giving the professor an alias of B. Okay, so this, uh, do I have this highlighted? Yeah, there we go. So this inner portion is going to be evaluated once for every professor in this relation. So for John Smith, who has a department code of one, this is going to find the average salary for department code one and return that value back into this outer query. I have another example coming up in just a minute that might explain that in a way that I'm not just tongue tying myself over and over again as I say it. Correlated subqueries are a little trickier than uncorrelated subqueries and generally are going to have lesser performance or slower performance. Uh, so if we can avoid correlated subqueries, that's typically what we're going to want to do. So what we're going to see here, and let me pull this up here. So if we want to find all of our professors that are teaching at least one section, and we'll see how to do this using a correlated subquery and an uncorrelated subquery, we're going to select the name of the professor from this professor relationship where this exists statement evaluates to true, okay? And it's going to evaluate to true if there is a tuple that is returned by this subquery. The subquery is select asterisk from section where professor.impid, and this is now getting the employee ID of the professor from this outer query, equal the professor ID in the section relation. Okay, so it's looking for the imp ID of this professor. So for this first tuple, it's going to pass this value, SJ89324, into the inner query and say, are there any tuples where this evaluates to true that prof ID equals SJ89324? And I think the answer is no. So this tuple is not going to be returned. And it's going to do this for every tuple in the relation. And you wind up getting these five things in response. Okay, so that's the correlated way to do it. In the uncorrelated subquery, we would select prof ID from section and get this list of values back. And then in the outer query, we're going to return any tuples that are in or that have a value of imp ID that's in this set of values. 
and we're gonna get these four in return. Okay, so I don't have this data set in Oracle, but we can use one of our existing data sets to demonstrate the same thing. So we have our course and our select on our uh, section relations. So if I say select asterisk from C, there's our courses, but then recall, we also have this relation sec, which uh, let's see where's course number where we might have, you know, one or more sections of a particular course. Okay, so we previously showed how we can do this with an uncorrelated subquery. We say select asterisk from C where course number n uh, select course number from sec, right? So this is our uncorrelated approach to finding what courses currently have a section being offered, okay? If we wanted to run this as a correlated subquery where the subquery is going to execute once for every tuple that is present in the table in the outer query, we would say select asterisk from C where exists uh, select asterisk from sec where sec dot course number equals C dot course number. Okay, so what's happening here This attribute sec dot course number is coming from the inner query that is querying the sec relation. C dot course number is coming from the outer query that is querying this relation C. Okay, so for every one of these tuples, so all 12 of these tuples, it's passing the value of course number into the inner query. So this inner query is going to execute 12 times. And for each one of the 12 times, if any tuples are returned by this, if there are any tuples in the sec relation that have a course number equal to the course number in the C relation, it's going to evaluate to true and this tuple is going to be returned from relation C. So we should get the exact same result that we get from our uncorrelated subquery. And I don't know if we can actually, with such a small data set, I don't think we're gonna see an actual difference in the performance. Now it looks like that's about the same time. But this is a, kind of a more computationally complex way to run essentially, or get essentially the same results, okay? There are some times that an uncorrelated, or that a, excuse me, that a correlated subquery might be necessary, uh, but in my experience, that's gonna be pretty few and far between, and you're gonna get better performance out of an uncorrelated subquery, because this just executes once. This set of values is returned to the outer query, and the outer query evaluates against that. So generally, that's uh, kind of the better approach. So, I, know, I know that was kind of a lot of twisty stuff, but yeah, go ahead, questions. Yeah, I'm a little tangled. Um, when it's correlated, then the inner query is still running first, but it's asking a question of the outer query. So it keeps on running that outer query each time. So the, yeah, that's a good question. So for the correlated subquery, yeah, I'm trying to think what the technical answer to that is. Because I think the outer query has to execute first to get the value of that first tuple to pass into the inner query. And then the inner query is going to execute. So that's what's happening. The, the inner query, so the outer query starts, but then the inner query has to execute multiple times before the outer query completes. Right. Whereas in an uncorrelated subquery, the inner query is going to completely execute one time and then pass that value back to the outer query, which is going to uh, take those values to, to complete. So 
it's still the inner query has to run one or more times before the outer query completes with either approach. But with the correlated subquery, the inner query is going to execute one time for every tuple that is in the table that the outer query is interacting with. Yeah. Good question. Other questions out there? All right, well, we've seen a lot today about, uh, I mean, we did start with some single table operations and then got into our binary operations and looked at, uh, you know, our inner joins, our outer joins, our set operators, our, uh, our subqueries, both correlated and, uh, and uncorrelated. So a lot of different approaches to, uh, to doing this. And one of the things uh, to really take away from tonight's lecture and from assignment three and from the, uh, the SQL project is that there are many ways to do the same thing and get the same results. And sometimes it's going to be completely just your personal preference uh, what you do, right? I tend to gravitate toward using uh, subqueries and I tend to gravitate toward uh, inner joins for things. I don't typically use uh, the set operations a lot, but this is just kind of a personal preference thing. So. <clears throat> Sometimes it's just going to be up to you. Sometimes it's going to be a lot easier to do one approach versus the other. There are some times that I've uh, found that, gosh, I can use a set operator and do this in just a couple of lines, whereas using some other approach is, uh, is much more complex. So you can really save yourself a lot of time by knowing uh, these multiple approaches, and sometimes you'll see big uh, performance differences. But generally, our relational algebra operations can be translated into a number of <coughs> kind of co equivalent expressions and equivalent SQL queries. So, uh, you know, think about different kind of creative ways that you can approach these problems. And I know a lot of what we did tonight may be kind of overwhelming, especially when we're joining together multiple tables and we've got all these nested parentheses and things like that. But I would encourage you to just, uh, just like we did when we read the business cases and created our ERDs, you know, take a minute, pause and decompose the problem. And just like when we joined our three tables together between employees, works in and plants, you don't have to do that all at once, right? You can join the two tables together, employees and works in, and then join that third table to those two tables you've already joined together. Like you can do this in a few steps and kind of build your SQL statement to be more and more complex. That's almost always what I do when I'm writing a complex SQL statement is I'll write kind of the, the base of it and then I'll add a little bit more to meet one requirement and then add a little bit more to add, uh, meet another requirement. And by the end of it, it may be, you know, 15 or 20 lines long, but I didn't just sit down and write 15 or 20 lines to start with. I started with one line and then added two more lines and then added two more lines and finally got to where I was going. So, uh, you know, decompose the problem, decompose your subqueries, understand what each piece is doing and uh, you'll get there that way. And that's how we're going to learn this stuff.